I'm about to do your Sagittarius September 2020 love reading, and in this reading we're going to take a look at your romantic person of interest and how they really feel about you. Sagittarius, how is it going? Come on in, have a seat. My name is Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Sagittarius love reading video. Hey, if this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, and start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you never miss any of the Sagittarius love readings I post for you every week. Now let's get on with this Sagittarius reading for today because today we're going to take a look at your romantic person of interest. So whoever it is that you are romantically connected with, romantically thinking about, or just like romantically, energetically connected to in some way, we're going to take a look at this romantic love interest of yours and see how they really feel about you, Sagittarius, see what their thoughts are about you, what their beliefs are about you, and we're going to look at what their intentions are toward you in September 2020, and what their most likely actions are going to be for September 2020, and then we're going to use a second deck to get you some advice from the universe on how to best navigate the situation with this romantic love interest of yours, you know, kind of like what to do, what not to do, so that things work out in a way that's best for you. Now just keep in mind that this is a general reading, so it's not even possible for it to resonate with literally every single Sagittarius on the whole world all at the same time. So regardless of how it resonates for you, you still probably want to check your Moon, Rising, and Venus sign videos because they can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And you can find the links to those videos in the description box down below. Now enough yakking, let's get on with this Sagittarius reading and let's get three cards for how does Sagittarius' romantic love interest really feel about Sagittarius. Okay, and we'll take that one. Let's get two more for how this person really feels. Oops, okay, we'll take an extra one, that's fine. Let's see what we have here. Apparently they have a lot of feelings for you. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Swords. So this is the Sword of Victory, the Sword of Truth. This can be the Sword of Clarity. This can also be the sword that you would use to sever a relationship with. This can also be the sword of, like, you know, something, new ideas, new thoughts popping in for this person. But we're talking about their feelings, though, so... I think they've, they've realized some truths here. In their feelings, we have Temperance. We have the Star, we have the Three of Wands, and we have the Page of Swords. Yeah, I think your person has gotten some clarity on some things. Right under this Ace of Swords, we have the Emperor. This is an energy of taking charge of a situation, taking control of a situation. The Emperor is a master manifester. He's got everything he needs to put together a plan to get what he wants and then to execute the plan to get what he wants. And I think your person has gotten some either some new ideas or some clarity on something, some new truths on something that's enabling them to step into this emperor energy. They're trying to be patient about this, though. This is like the careful blending of the head and the heart. This is patience. This is like mixing together things a little bit at a time, looking at the big picture of how is it working out, and then coming back and fine-tuning things, making some adjustments. Your person is trying to be very patient here in this situation, but I think they did get some clarity on some things. This is the star. This can be like divine guidance, divine intervention. This can be the universe handing your person a gift, or they, they feel like they were handed a gift from the universe in you. This can, this can mean that your person feels like you are the one for them. And they're trying to be patient with this situation, probably because they, they know you're the one. It's like they... They have this idea in their mind. This is truth for them. Now, this Three of Wands, this is positive expectancy. This is also waiting, though. In the Two of Wands, the person is, like, at a crossroads. They're trying to choose which path leads me to the world I want, which path do I need to leave behind. And they're, they're in the planning stages of deciding what to do. In the Three of Wands, this is the next step. The plan, the decision's made. The plan's already been put in place. Actions are already being taken on the plan. This person's going down the path, currently. 
and they're expecting something positive to be coming to them. They're expecting their ships to be coming in. They're expecting this to pay off. But they're still waiting on that to happen. And we have this page of swords. This is news and messages. This is communication. This is an energy of like wanting to learn something. Like trying to become a master at something but being at the beginning stages of that like having the desire to learn do their due diligence it's like trying to figure something out this can also be an energy of like keeping tabs on somebody like checking their social media pages asking people about them uh, trying to keep tabs on somebody while you're trying to figure them out while you're trying to be patient I think this person already, they, they know that you're the one for them and they've decided to go down that path that leads to you and they're just waiting for that to pan out. And maybe in the meantime, they're, they're keeping tabs on you. What are this person's thoughts about Sagittarius, please? Eh, all right. They have a lot of thoughts about you. Good grief. Okay, we'll try and put this in order that it came out. Ta-da! I normally try to get three cards for each of these questions, and I just got six there. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Magician. So this is, your person's thinking about manifesting you. This is a ma this is the Master Manifester. This, this means that your person has all the tools, all the abilities, all the resources. They've got everything they need to manifest or like create whatever it is that they want. And they're actively doing that right now. They're trying to manif they're thinking about manifesting things with you. In their thoughts about you, we have the Six of Pentacles, we have Death, we have the Four of Pentacles, the Four of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, and the King of Pentacles. We got a lot of Pentacles here. So out of these six cards, four of them are Pentacles. We got two major Arcanas here. So this Six of Pentacles, this is balance. This is generosity, reciprocity, like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. This is equal give and take. So your person thinks that this connection with you is, is balanced. There's equal give and take here. I feel like they're trying to actively manifest you. We have the Ten of Swords next under this Magician. This is a, an ending. This is a swift ending, a painful ending. Maybe an ending in betrayal. Maybe an ending that no one saw coming. Well, this guy definitely didn't see it coming. All these swords are in his back. So I feel like there was an ending between you guys at some point. Your person is trying to be patient with this thing. They're, they have hope that they can heal this. They view you as the one for them. They're, they're actively going down the path that leads to you. They, they're waiting on... They have this positive expectancy that you are going to come back or that they're going to be able to get back with you. They're waiting on that to happen. In the meantime, I feel like they're keeping an eye on things. They're trying to stay up on the situation of what's going on with you. They're trying to manifest you, balance this back out. They're trying to manifest a transformation here. This death card is a transformation, like when the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. This isn't necessarily a pleasant transformation, though. It's not all fun and games when the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. It actually dies in that cocoon and is transformed and reborn into the beautiful butterfly. So this is the similar thing. In their thoughts, they're, they're thinking about some sort of transformation. They're trying to manifest a transformation, probably away from this ending and towards this six of wands. This is victory and success. And we've got the five of cups next. This is sadness and remorse about the past. It's being focused on these three cups of love that have been spilled out, the emotions that have been spilled, the time, effort, and energy that's been spilled out and not focusing on the two cups that are still behind them. So your person's got, they're thinking about the past still, but I think they are focusing on what's in front of them because they're trying to manifest things. They're trying to balance this out. They're trying to transform it. They want this 10 of cups with you. This is the happy fairy tale ending card. This is about two people being together in love, emotionally happy, emotionally fulfilled, equals. Everyone's happy and in love. We've got the High Priestess next. This is divine guidance. I mean, yeah, Nine of Swords is right under that, though. This is like 
fears, worries, anxieties. This is thinking about something over and over and over again, not being able to get it out of their head. Um, it might be interfering with their sleep. This is a card of like, you have a fear to face, but you're not facing it. And when whatever you don't deal with during the day will come to visit you at night. That's, and your person, I think they're, they're struggling with this still a little bit. And they're actively trying to manifest a transformation to all this in their thoughts about you this four of pentacles is they they want to hold on tightly to you they don't want to let you go four of wands we've got two fours here the four of wands fours are about stability like think of a table it's got four legs to be stable so this can be like financial stability trying to hold on to finances and resources but i feel like this is your person wanting to hold on to you wanting to have this stable home life this stable family life stability in the connection between you this is one of the things that they're trying to manifest here this ten of pentacles it goes pretty good with that ten of cups we just saw so this is the combining together of two people two families their assets their resources to make something very stable very abundant very secure this is like building a legacy this this is the happy family card like the happy home life card all everything's accounted for all the material possessions are in place everything like no one wants for anything these two cards are really really good together and then we've got in their thoughts the king of pentacles so this is them thinking about providing this kind of stability to you this this is a very generous person a very grounded stable abundant prosperous person someone who's good at managing things managing assets and resources building empires probably has their money together, has their material world together, their, their home life together. This is who kind of creates this Ten of Pentacles. I mean, I don't know if they're currently that type of energy or if this is what they're manifesting. It's what they're spending a lot of time thinking about, trying to become. But they definitely, we have a lot of Pentacles here. They view you as the one and they're expecting something positive to come out of this with you. What are this person's beliefs about Sagittarius, please? Oh, okay. What do they believe about Sagittarius? Let's get one more. One more. And it shoots three out for me, so I guess we're taking three more here. Oh. bottom of the deck we have the ace of swords again sword of truth sword of clarity this can be new ideas this can be severing a relationship this is the sword you would use to do it huh well normally i don't read reversals i i'm read the cards upright but when I asked for one more and it shot out what looked like one there was actually three there and when I flipped them over they're all upside down they're all reversed and I feel like I'm supposed to read them that way when normally I would just turn them upright so we're gonna keep them that way in their beliefs about you Saji we got the lovers the world the five of Pentacles in reverse the Seven of Swords in reverse, and the Empress in reverse. So normally, I don't I don't read the reversals. I feel like there was some stuff going on in the past that probably should not have been going on in the past, and that's one of the things your person has transformed. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they're not wanting to let go of you, and they're trying to rebalance things out. Is because. I think at some point in time, you know, someone was doing some sneaky, shady stuff. They probably shouldn't have been possibly even birthing something new with someone else. This is represents all four queens. This can be the mother of the deck. So this can represent your person like birthing something new, some new love somewhere else. This can sometimes represent a pregnancy. I, I'm feeling like your person was being sneaky in the past birth something new somewhere else you left them out in the cold because of it you used the sword because of it yeah that's that's and these things are all now showing up in the reverse because 
they're they're not doing this anymore. They, in their beliefs, they they know they need to get rid of this. They believe this this can never happen again. We've got the lovers and the world card here. So this is soulmate twin flame level energy. This is divine counterparts. These are people who are supposed to be together. Like definitely, and also can represent needing to make a choice here. The world is the ending of one cycle. The beginning of a beautiful new cycle and i think that's exactly what's going on your person your person's using this sword to cut off all of these sneaky behaviors this birthing of something new sneaking around behind your back you being left out in the cold them being left out in the cold however that worked out in your case this is them let's let's end all that let's reverse all that not do that anymore let's cut that off right under this ace of swords we have judgment this is a card of second chances this is resurrecting something from the dead bringing something back to life transformed in a way that it's never going to be the same again it's it's starting this new cycle where you guys are the lovers again you in this person's beliefs you he, they believe you were supposed to be together what are this person's intentions towards sagittarius in september 2020 please okay what are their intentions towards Sagittarius? Okay. Good Lord. This person's chatty Kathy right now, it looks like. Bottom of the deck, we have the Ten of Swords. This is that painful, abrupt ending. Okay, I see. This person is, they're wanting to reunite with you. We've got this Ten of Swords. It's telling me the similar story here on the bottom. Ten of Swords, there was that painful, abrupt ending. They're now trying to manifest something different. They're worried. They're stuck in their head about it. They're thinking about it a lot. They're fearful, worried, anxiety about this. It's like the divine timing is involved here. To them, this is a, a fated event. It's like they have to wait on the timing to be right. What they want is this Ten of Cups with you. There's still sadness and remorse about the past. They have a lot of passion and desire for you. They intend to come toward you. The Queen of Wands doesn't take no for an answer. She gets what she wants. She goes after it with bold, passionate, fiery determination. Your person's still hurt from all this. Would you? And then maybe in this case, they might ought to be hurt from this. If they were doing sneaky behind your back stuff, birthing something new somewhere else, if they're doing that stuff, they probably got what's coming to them. Now, in their intentions, we got six cards instead of three the High Priestess, the King of Swords, the Knight of Pentacles, the Two of Wands, the Four of Cups, and the King of Cups. We got two kings here. In their intentions they're, they're intending to do something about this ending they're trying to actively manifest a, a transformation to that ending this again can be divine guidance it's like your person is being divinely guided in this case we've got the lovers the star temperance now the high priestess i mean th this is the intuition this is she who knows this is that internal knowing receiving signs about this this is this can also represent like a connection that's more than just, you know, a physical connection, more than just, you know, like a a romance sexual thing. This this is a deeper connection than that. This King of Swords is very smart, very analytical, very fair person who is a decision maker. They're interested in the truth and the facts of the matter, not the emotions, not the story. They make very fair, logical decisions. So your person intends to approach things that they're very observant, very, very fair. This is also about speaking the truth, operating in, you know, a sense of fairness and justice. This Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the deck. This is putting one foot in the front of the other, this slow, methodical energy. This can represent, you know, intending to take things slow, not be in any hurry, not be in a rush, not want to mess anything up almost like a perfectionist type energy where they want things to be just right 
and they're willing to go slow to make sure that things are just right because they realize this is a crossroads. This is a fork in the road. This is a decision point about which, which path leads them to the world that they want, which path do they need to leave behind. And, and they're, they're wanting to leave behind this ending, and they're trying to manifest you. So what, what leads them to the path that they want is you, and in their feelings, they have already made that decision. They're already like expecting something good to come out of this. They're just waiting on their ships to come in. They're waiting to make this love offer to you. This is, they want to make a love offer to you, but they're afraid you're going to reject it, so they haven't done it yet. It's just kind of left hanging there in the air. Either that, or they have made the love offer to you, and you haven't accepted it or rejected it yet. You've just kind of like ignored it and left it there. But this is them wanting to make that love offer and not doing it. This King of Cups, this is someone who has a lot of love and emotions for you. They have strong feelings for you. They just don't outwardly express it. They don't necessarily tell you that. They don't wear their heart on their sleeve. This is also a decision maker like this King of Swords. He's emotionally detached. He doesn't even consult his emotions. He looks at the facts, the truth of the matter, and makes a fair decision based just on what he can see in front of him. This guy does consult his emotions. He just doesn't let them cloud his judgment. He consults them when he makes decisions. He just doesn't necessarily wear his heart on his sleeve, so to speak. So they're intending to like use their intuition, their gut feelings. They're trying to be fair about this. They're 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 willing to accept slow progress here, but they know what they want. They're just afraid to offer it. They're afraid to offer it. They're not tipping their hand. They're not letting you know how they feel. At least that's what they intend. Now, we know how people are, what they intend to do, what they actually do are oftentimes very different things. So let's take a look at what are this person's most likely actions towards Sagittarius in September 2020, please. What are their most likely actions towards Sagittarius in September 2020, please? Let's get one more for this person's most likely actions. On the bottom of the deck, there's that emperor energy again. So this is an energy of taking control, taking charge of a situation, going after what it is he wants, put together a plan, and then execute that plan to get what they want. That's their most likely action. In their most likely actions, we have the Six of Wands, the Moon, and the Tower. So this Six of Wands is success, victory, recognition, like moving forward in success and victory. Your person intends to get in this Emperor energy. Well, this is what they're not their intentions. What they're most likely to do is get in this Emperor energy and try to move forward in success and victory. This Moon card is... Fears, worries, anxieties. This can represent the unconscious mind, the emotions, the intuition. This can also represent things being hidden in the dark, like something that your person doesn't know about or something that they themselves are trying to keep hidden in the dark. So maybe that you don't know about it, maybe so that other people don't know about it. This is keeping something hidden in the dark. Then we have the tower, and this is a very abrupt change in your person's life. This is, you know, the foundation comes apart, everything comes crumbling down. This is, this is a very abrupt change that happens. And I don't know if th that's what they're trying to keep hidden, like something has changed for them. This, this, this can also, like I said, represent recognition, as in like your person being recognized for something, being in the spotlight for something. But this can also represent recognition as in like your person recognizing something themselves, like coming to some sort of realization and recognizing something that maybe was hidden from them before. Maybe they didn't see it before, and now they recognize it, and it causes some sort of tower moment in their life, this whole like... Everything that they thought is like now different. It's like what they wanted has abruptly changed. Something something massive changes for your person because they recognize something that they didn't recognize, they didn't see before. 
which is probably why they were engaging in, you know, behaviors like, like this, birthing something new by sneaking around and leaving you out in the cold. That's why they're wanting to end that cycle. That's what it's looking like. I don't really know what's going on. I'm just trying to piece this together for you the best I can. And hopefully it's getting some, some level of accuracy for you. Now let's get some advice for you. What advice can we give Sagittarius on how to navigate this situation with this romantic love interest of theirs? What should they do? What should they not do? How should they best play this so that it works out in a way that's best for Sagittarius? What is the advice... Sagittarius, please. Okay, we got one more in here. And that came out before that one. On the bottom of the deck, we have strength. So this to me is saying that this was a hard situation for you. And it's requiring a lot of internal strength on your part. A lot of courage on your part to get through this. But this card tells me that you have that strength. You have that courage. You have everything you need. To be able to make it through this situation. Now this can also represent, you know, trying to tame the beast within. Like, you have this desire to act on something and do something. And this is you kind of like reining yourself in and like petting the lion and calming it down to, to keep yourself at bay. One of those two things. Now. Okay. In your advice, we got six cards. We got the Five of Cups, the Ace of Wands, the Star, the Ten of Swords, the Hierophant, and the Ten of Cups. Yeah, this was a hard situation. There was an ending here. Like I said before, this is a painful, abrupt ending. There's sadness and remorse about the past. Being focused on these three cups that have been spilled, the love and the emotions that have been spilled, the time, effort, and energy that was wasted, having sadness about what could have been or what might have been or what should have been, not being so focused on what you still have though. So this is a card that, that usually tells me that your focus is in the wrong spot and that you need to be very consciously aware of where your focus is at and choose where to place your focus, not let your focus just go here whenever it wants to because when your focus is on what you've lost, what you don't have anymore, that's what you're going to feel. And you're not going to feel these positive emotions that you still are capable of feeling. So this is about making sure you put your focus in the right place. Ace of Wands. This is a passionate new beginning. This, this can be the spark of a new idea or the spark of some new passion, some new desire that you have. The star, this is a card of healing, it's a card of hope, this is divine guidance or even divine intervention. This can be, you know, your person is a gift to you from the universe. This could be the universe handing you some, some gift in, in the form of a passionate new beginning. Or the universe handing you a gift in the form of some ending. This, this is a good card though, this is like the universe is on your side at the very least. This could represent that you have the hope that this ending can be healed. I think that's what it is. Like, you have some sadness and remorse about the past. It's taking you a lot of strength to get through this ending and this sadness and remorse and grief over the connection. And you want this passionate new beginning. And this is you having the hope and the belief that it can happen. That the healing has taken place and that this ending can be overcome. And things can go to the next level. The Hierophant is a card of, again, divine guidance. This is a card of commitment, though. Taking things to the next level. And then we've got the Ten of Cups. This is the happy fairy tale ending card. This is two people being together in love. Emotionally happy. Emotionally fulfilled. Truly in love with each other. This is the happy family card. The, the, the happy fairy tale ending card. Now, if you still have questions that you want answered about this situation or about your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Sagittarius love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's going on in your situation. And I'll see you in the next video.